You must remember this A kiss is still a kiss Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and today I'm going to show you how to build this one chunk skyscraper. It's based on a 1920s art deco sort of style, but would make the perfect addition to any city build. I've given you guys a lobby and an example floor packed with detail, and as always, it fits within a single chunk of 16 by 16 blocks. Let's get into it! Start by framing out the corners with smooth sandstone spaced one block apart and with a four block gap in the centre of each row for an archway. It should look like this when you're done. Each outside corner should be a five high pillar of smooth sandstone. The next pillar in is regular sandstone with a chiselled block on top and the middle pillars are one block taller, four sandstone in the middle with a smooth on top. This pattern repeats on each side so take a few minutes to finish this off and make sure it's looking good. We're going to use the same pattern for every window in this build. Dark oak stairs at the bottom, grey and light grey glass panes, and a dark prismarine on top. We'll place these in each one wide gap between the pillars we've just made, topping them off with a sandstone stair. As before, take a minute to go around and make sure all of these are in place before you continue with the build. For the main entrance, we'll have an archway made of dark prismarine, leaving a four block high doorway and adding a doorstep made of the same material. We'll fill in the top half here with light grey glass panes, then add sandstone stairs to frame out the archway. Right on top of that, we'll also frame out a two by two bordered by more stairs, build the top stairs back one more block, then add a sort of crest using gold blocks and prismarine brick. Add a smooth sandstone to the dark prismarine on each side to fill in the gap behind the stairs, then we'll start on the other three walls. Place sandstone stairs next to each pillar and dark oak stairs in the middle, then add more sandstone pillars behind the stairs and fill in the centre with the dark prismarine. Top this off with stairs and slope more stairs inwards from the sides but don't have them touching in the middle. Build the same pattern in the two remaining walls, and your ground floor is done. We're going to start the middle section by once again placing smooth sandstone one block apart around the corners here. From each one of these, build a 12 block tall pillar with three sandstone then a smooth sandstone, repeated three times. This pattern continues around the whole build, leaving two block wide gaps in the centre of each wall, which we'll fill in later. For now, each of these one wide gaps is again going to be filled by the window pattern from the ground floor, a dark oak stair, grey and light grey glass panes, and a dark prismarine block. Hopefully you've got the pattern down by now because you'll be repeating this a lot. Once the windows are done, fill in the empty panels on the side and back walls with dark prismarine, one block back from the outside wall to give it some depth. Top this off with sandstone stairs, and seal it with smooth sandstone on either side. The front wall is going to be a little different. Grab some dark oak stairs and stack them all the way up the side of the sandstone pillars, capping it off with a sandstone stair. Build an identical pillar on the other side of the stairs, then mirror this on the opposite side of the gap in the front wall. Connect the bottom of the inside pillars with dark oak stairs, and we'll fill in a 2x2 version of the window pattern we've used for the rest of the build, placing the glass panes diagonally and topping it off with dark prismarine, then repeating the pattern upwards with sandstone stairs at the top. That's the middle section done. Here at the front, we'll add two simple domes using prismarine bricks, a 3x3 with the inside corner missing, then a plus shape on top. Adding smooth sandstone on the inside corners, we'll build these up into pillars following the same pattern as before, three regular sandstone, then a smooth sandstone, repeated three times. Build another pillar diagonally from there, then another towards the outside, connecting to the diagonal with more dark prismarine. Mirror this on the opposite side, then fill up the central section with the same window pattern we used on the floor below. Continue the sandstone pillars around the sides of the build with two block gaps between them this time, and we'll fill these in with the same window pattern. Now while we work on that, I'll remind you that these tutorials wouldn't be possible without the support I receive from Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash pixelriffs to donate and support future tutorials. We'll add window sections to the back wall here as well, leaving only the two wide section in the middle of the wall empty. This, like on the other floors, we're going to fill up with dark prismarine and cap off with sandstone stairs. We'll also use sandstone stairs to add detail to this back wall, creating eight shapes every four or five blocks, spaced as evenly as possible. Now we can start working on the crown of the build. Starting from the front wall, we can build up with a sandstone block and a stair, then build two pillars behind that with a stair sloping inwards. Add the same thing coming in one block from the sides, and don't add the stair on top of the pillar this time. Before we go any further, it's probably best to fill in the rest of this roof with sandstone slabs. 
With that done, leave a gap of one block and build another block and a stair, with a shorter pillar behind it, and a pillar to the side capped off with a stair. Now build the same on the opposite side. The last addition to the roof will be a set of short pillars with a small window. These won't be usable rooms, they're just here for aesthetic purposes. The structure of the build is now pretty much in place and it just needs the finishing touches. First, we'll place four trapdoors on the back of the glass panes above the entrance and now we can place a 2x2 painting up there. And so when we place a dark oak double door, it still feels like the inside is properly sealed off. Adding some stairs to the central pillars around the walls will make the building feel slightly more ornate and help the walls feel a bit less flat. I'm going to swap the grass from our plot out for andesite and stone slabs, but you can just blend it into whatever city sidewalk you've got going on. A couple of potted plants either side of the doorway wouldn't be a bad touch either. It's finally time to go inside, and the first job is to swap out all the grass on the bottom floor for dark oak wood, which I'm going to do with the fill command because I'm lazy. Now we'll grab some dark oak stairs and cover up this spot where the outside wall curves inwards, then continue around the room at the same height to create a border for the ceiling. On three of the corners we're going to add hoppers pointing into the stairs here and here, then fill in the gaps behind and in front of them with dark oak planks. There are neat ceiling ornaments, but they also help with a functional detail which I'll explain later. Once those are in place, we can fill in the rest of the ceiling. You can make it more detailed if you like by adding more stairs, and remember to keep rotating your point of view to place corner stairs so the pattern can stay symmetrical. You could always fill in the rest of the ceiling with slabs, but I'd still recommend cutting out a 2x2 section from the centre and placing corner stairs in a square like this. At each corner of the square you can place glowstone blocks which will help light this floor and the room above. In the corner of the ceiling which doesn't have hoppers, we'll build a simple minecart elevator so we can right click to go up to the next floor. We're going to turn the next floor into a busy office room, keeping the 1920s theme in mind. We'll place red carpets to cover up the glowstone blocks, then a central table made of jungle wood where the workers could be briefed on the day's activities. We're going to build a desk with a typewriter in each corner. I made the tutorial for the typewriter a while ago, which I'll link in the iCards and the video description, but that's why you need a hopper in the floor, so the armor stand can sit at the correct height for a chain helmet to look like a typewriter keyboard when a stair is forced down onto it by a piston. On top of the second hopper we're going to place a redstone comparator with some fences above it, leading into a hopper on the next floor. This is supposed to look like a pneumatic tube system, you'd put documents in a capsule, place them in the cradle, and they'd get sucked up and delivered elsewhere in the building. Throw an item onto the comparator and it will disappear, but of course it's just been collected by the hopper underneath. Work around the room adding more desks and typewriters, but once you're done pushing stuff around with pistons you can fill in the ceiling, which also provides a floor for the next story of the building. Decorate the central table and the remaining desk spaces with plant pots, iron pressure plates to look like stacks of paper, and end rods with green carpets to act as table lamps. My typewriter tutorial will also show you how to make a chair design which incorporates a minecart so players can sit at these desks at the right height to make it look like they're using the typewriter, and even a banner to hang on the wall above so it looks like text is printed on the page. Stuff like this is totally optional, but it helps with immersion. Back downstairs in the lobby area, we'll add a front desk with quartz stairs, a chest for storing files behind it, and some carpet there for the receptionist. We'll add red carpet leading in from the door, and we'll bring some pillars down from the ceiling next to each light to help the upper floors feel supported. The red carpet can continue out between the pillars, and we'll tidy up the walls down here where we need to. In each corner we can have a lounge style seating booth where visitors can wait or employees can take a break. Nether brick is still my favourite material for couches, and an end rod table in the corner can help to light up the dark spots, and bookshelves can act as magazine racks, giving the guests something to read while they wait. Adding trap doors on each wall for detail, we can also place a few 2x2 paintings. I'm using the ones that match the painting above the door, but that's up to you. In the corner with the minecart elevator, it might help to place a few slabs so you get a smoother landing and avoid fall damage. Continue the minecart elevator into the upper floors, which could just mirror the workfloor we've already built, or you could build something else entirely. But we're running out of time for this tutorial, so I'll leave that up to you. If you build anything awesome in here, I'd love to see it. Send me a screenshot on Twitter or tag me on Instagram, I'm at PixelRiffs on both. Thanks for watching this one chunk tutorial which was made possible with the support of my wonderful community of patrons. You can head to patreon.com slash to donate and get rewards, including membership to my patrons only Minecraft server. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, you can download this build from the page linked in the description, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future tutorials. My name has been PixelRiffs, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now!
You must remember this A kiss is still a kiss 